The paper describes the culmination of a very long-term collaboration uh, across many countries and involving many scientists and engineers and physicists and informaticians. In the first 10 years, we mainly focused on reverse engineering the neocortical tissue, where we looked at the cell densities, we looked at the number of cell types that they are, the morphologies of cells, the kind of connections that they form in terms of the anatomy and the physiology and the electrophysiology of neurons and gene expression. And in the second 10 years, we focused on developing algorithms and a software ecosystem which would allow us to take the sparse data and constrain it, a dense digital reconstruction of the neocortical tissue. The reconstruction begins with the placement of neuronal morphologies in a three-dimensional virtual volume according to experimentally observed densities and proportions. An algorithm ensures that the placement of axons and dendrites is consistent with cortical architecture. The next step was to connect those neurons. For that, first we had to find out where those neurons are touching each other. Each of those touches is a potential location for a synapse. The resulting density of touches is much higher than biological synapse densities. Therefore, not each touch forms a functional synapse, a fact well established through EM experiments. So we pruned the touches to match key experimental constraints. This pruning was according to principles of synaptic connectivity established by us and others. What remains is functional synaptic connectivity which we validated against a variety of experimental data. So here we have a challenge. We have a complicated system that we want to understand. And in my view, the, the way to understand a complex system is to build it step by step. And each step of building is a step of understanding. For example, we know that there are cell types, but we don't know how many cell types. And one process of understanding through our project was to characterize objectively 11 cell types, electrical cell types, each one has his own firing pattern. This is a step in understanding. The next step was to model these cells mathematically. And we develop a mathematical way to use Hodgkin-Huxley equation in an extended way and build a simulation of the way these cells are active. Eventually, combining the things together, you get a music, electrical activity of this network of neurons that should imitate the real biological network that you try to understand. Uh, to model synaptic transmission, we integrated experimental data on electrical and synaptic properties uh, gathered over two decades uh, of experiments performed in our own lab and also from published sources of literature, less than 1% of synaptic connection types have actually been mapped experimentally in the neocortical microcircuit. This paper is possible thanks to the advances of modern supercomputers. In order to accurately uh, simulate the biophysics, we have to choose a time step of 25 microseconds. And at each of these time steps, we have to solve several billion equations. That literally is only possible if you have a supercomputer. I think an interesting aspect of the digital reconstruction is that you realize that you can't measure everything experimentally. Um, but what we also realized is that you don't have to because the sparse data that is obtained provides sufficient constraints to give you a first approximation of the microcircuitry. It's a big step forward that the reconstruction actually makes it possible and provides detailed predictions on the anatomy and physiology of over 2,000 synaptic connection types. Only about 20 of these synaptic connection types have actually been experimentally measured. A satisfying outcome of this work has been the finding that the reconstruction exhibits emergent properties consistent with an array of in vitro and in vivo experiments without specific parameter tuning. Moreover, the transparency of the digital representation allowed us to go back and analyze and understand the mechanisms behind these emergent properties.
But we found that modulation of calcium played a fundamental role in determining network state. In particular, we found a sharp transition between synchronous and asynchronous states that was calcium mediated. And we found that at this very sharp transition, the circuit has very interesting computational properties. The reconstruction can be accessed through an online portal called the Neocortical Microcircuit Collaboration Portal. This portal makes it possible to access the data that went into building the reconstruction as well as the models that came out of the reconstruction. These models are across several different levels, ion channels, single neuron models, detailed predictions of over 2000 synaptic connection types, as well as all the papers that were used to validate the properties of the reconstruction. In order to do the reconstruction, the simulation of the microcircuit, we had to develop an entire ecosystem of more than 30 software tools. These software tools allow you, for example, to uh, curate individual cell morphologies, to create cell models, to set up simulations, run these simulations, and then analyze them. We intend to share these software tools uh, progressively with the community. So we see the digital reconstruction as a scaffold model or scaffold reconstruction. On the one hand, we can begin adding the missing biological data, such as extracellular space, gap junctions, glia, blood vessels, molecular pathways inside neurons and synapses, synaptic plasticity, neuromodulation, and so on. On the other hand, we can continuously refine the biological accuracy of the reconstruction by taking in feedback from the community and regularly releasing a new version of the reconstruction. In a way, it is a platform for in silico neuroscience.